Hello and welcome to our webinar series here, Virtual Medica 2020. Uh, this session here is about financing and incentives for R&D and production in Germany. My name is Gabriel Fleming. I'm a medical technology expert at Germany Trade and Invest and also this session's moderator. Uh, certainly my pleasure to introduce uh, two colleagues of mine, Ms. Astrid Sachse and Daniel Stevens. Uh, they're both in-house experts uh, for financing and incentives. <clears throat> and they will be providing some very detailed and worthwhile information on the funding programs we have available in Germany. Just for introductory purposes, Germany Trade and Invest is the Federal Economic Development Agency of Germany. Uh, we have two major sections. A trade section is to support German companies um, accessing international countries, international markets. And the invest section, this is where us three speakers are part of, is actually dedicated to helping international companies uh, setting up business in Germany. For those companies uh, interested or preparing to become established in Germany, uh, our services are free of charge and include market analyses, market info, market access information. Uh, our in-house legal help desk is prepared to provide legal information such as how to set up a GmbH or maybe um, work contracts, etc. cetera. Um, of course, we'll support your funding and financing requirements and questions. Uh, our service um, specialists are ready. You're, you already met them just a minute ago. And last but not least, partnering and site selection support is, of course, part of our rolling out the red carpet for you in Germany. In 2019, total expenditure on healthcare in Germany reached a record 400 billion euros. Uh, which actually put us on first place across uh, the European Union as the biggest healthcare spender. In 2020, COVID times, the German government is even more interested in having a viable, sustainably funded healthcare sector. And therefore, a stimulus package was put together uh, worth 130 billion euros last summer. Uh, 10 billion of which are intended directly specifically for the healthcare sector, uh, meaning to support hospitals, uh, local public health authorities, manufacturing and also building up of a reserve, strategic reserve for personal protective equipment. And of course, vaccines development. Uh, this is all in high need these days. The hospital sector stimulus per se uh, consists of 4.3 billion euros intended uh, focusing on digitalization and COVID measures. Hel um, hospitals, they can apply for funding of their investments in digitalized emergency care tools and to reach a new federal standard of digital infrastructure. Uh, this includes um, patient, electronic patient treatment documentation, digitalized medication plans, and uh, such interesting new things as telemedicine networks across hospitals, departments, but also external institutions. And compensation of revenue losses is included here in this package as many operations have been postponed. Uh, this leaves uh, hospitals with cash flow um, issues and of course remuneration for of additional costs specifically personal protective equipment is also applicable in this um, in this package um, as noted before ppe is in very high demand currently and cost uh, generates additional costs for those hospitals in summary, this generates um, specific opportunities for international manufacturers. Uh, some are indirect. Um, hospitals are increasingly procuring uh, specific uh, products, but also some direct opportunities. And having said that, I'd like to ask Astrid to kindly provide us with detailed information on how international manufacturers can apply for direct grants and loans for production in Germany. Astrid, yes. please, would you proceed? 
Yes, thank you, Gabriel, and also a very warm welcome to our listeners from my side. Now, I would like to give you an overview of the general funding instruments that are available in Germany. These are most importantly grants and loans, as well as equity and mezzanine capital, and mostly interesting for larger investments, loan collaterals. The funding can be used for investments, working capital, research and development, which Daniel is going to talk about in a minute, personal and other specific purposes. The funding instruments are generally combinable. However, there is a rule that no single aspect of an investment may be subsidized twice. So for example, you might get a grant for research and development and a loan for an investment, but not a grant and a loan for research and development. Next slide, please. Now, probably the most important grant program is the so-called GRW program. Its objective is to create jobs uh, by setting up new manufacturing or service facilities. Um, as you can see on the map here, it's uh, offered in specific regions throughout Germany. And uh, this map is as of today valid until the end of 2021. It is um, a non-repayable cash grant of up to 40% of the eligible costs. The 40% would, for example, apply if you're a small company in the uh, region of the Polish border. As you can see on the map here and on the table on the left side, the funding gets more the darker the area on the map is and the smaller the applying company is. Now, for these purposes, a small company is one that has less than 50 employees and less than 10 millions of turnover. A medium sized company has less than 250 employees and less than 50 million turnover. And only if you uh, uh, pass this threshold, you would be considered a large enterprise. Now, the eligible costs for this grant are generally the entire capital expenditure, that is to say the pur purchase or production costs of assets like new buildings, machinery and equipment, or the salary costs for two years. It is required that you create long term quality jobs and that any subsidized equipment must remain on site for at least five years. Um, you can apply for this grant uh, through your house bank. Next slide, please. There are also public loan programs and they differ according to the size and the level of development of the applying company. So for example, if you are a startup um, seeking a loan of 100, 125,000 euros, the so-called Gründerkredit could be for you. If your startup needs more money, let's say half a million euros, you might consider the ERP capital loan, which you can see here in the middle of the slide. Companies that have been long established, for example, longer than five years, uh, could, for example, apply for 1 million uh, of standard public loan. All the loan programs have very low interest rates and principal free years. That is to say during this time, only interest, but not the loan sum itself needs to be repaid. And again, all of these uh, programs are av available through your house bank. Next slide, please. Now there are also funding sources, especially for young innovative enterprises. The examples shown here are organized as public private partnerships. On the left side, you can see the Cooperian project. This is a co-investment by several states, state entities, as you can see here in the middle. In order to get the funding, your company would have to bring in a private investor who would have to invest the same amount as the Cooperian fund under the same conditions. On the right side, you can see the high-tech Gründerfonds, which is an investment also by several state entities plus a private investor. So there is no need for the company to bring in their own private investor for this uh, funding. In addition to the funding, the high-tech Gründerfonds also offers a network and coaching activities. Next slide, please. 
Another interesting program is the Invest 2.0 program. Uh, this is a program where business angels, which could be a natural person or a company, invest a sum of 10 to 500,000 euros annually and receive a 20% investment grant for that. Also, they get a 25% exit grant on their exit profit, which is to make up for the 25% tax that they have to pay on the profit. So that was my general uh, introduction to the available uh, funding instruments. And uh, now I give back to you, Gabriel. Super, thank you so much, Astrid. Uh, this was great. Um, up to 40% um, funding rates. Uh, there's uh, venture capital, so many things to talk about and to follow up in detail. Um, now, Daniel, may I ask you to please provide the overview for uh, funding opportunities regarding innovation. I mean, there's European funding, there's German uh, funding. Let's, let's hear what you have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Gabriel. Yes, um, there's um, funding right across from, from top to bottom at the European level, the national level, and even at uh, regional level within Germany. Um, <clears throat> going down to the bottom at the regional level within Germany, we, we can advise you on what funds are available through the German federal states. I'm not going to go into them in too much detail here, simply because um, I don't have I don't have that much time, unfortunately. But um, I'm certainly going to talk about European and national levels. So, Gabriel, if you can move the slide on, please. Um, I will start. Thank you. Um, Horizon Europe is the successor to the Horizon 2020 program, which I'm sure many of you will at least have heard about, if not know practically already. Um, it's going to run over the next seven years. It starts on, on January the 1st of 2021. The budget, which was um, had, a, had been announced to be over 100 billion euros last year, has been trimmed slightly because of, um, because of the coronavirus crisis. And the three pillars upon which it's founded, excellent science, global challenges, and, and innovative Europe are also very similar to the preceding program. A lot of aspects of Horizon Europe are actually very similar to the preceding program, but the um, particular emphasis um, through, the, through what we've heard in, in, our, in our conversations with the uh, program administrators at this time, there is even more of a focus on international partnerships. So an applying company should have at least two other partners based in at least two other EU countries. Um, and that the emphasis will very much be on commercialization and especially the dissemination and publication of results within Europe. And as you will see, particularly within the country that research and development projects are, are carried out in. The funding as before is up to 100% eligible cost of a project. Um, whether there's a, a cap or not will be determined on the basis of the projects and its, and its uses. But um, if you can um, answer the calls to proposals, which Horizon Europe periodically puts out and invites companies to submit their projects, then this is a obviously a particularly advantageous program to, to apply to. Next slide, please. Moving on now to, to um, programs just on a German national level. Um, perhaps the most open one that we have was introduced at the start of this year. It's uh, the Tax Credit Act of 2020. In Germany, it's the, the Forschungszulagengesetz, one of those lovely long German words. How it works is that a company um, may register with its local tax office as being a company that is performing a research and development activity. And this activity falls under an extremely wide definition. Pretty much the only exception to this is if the company is researching and developing a process which is unique to its own operations and which has very limited benefit outside of the scope of the, of the company. Um, the tax office certifies this company as a, as a researcher developer or as a, as a company performing these activities. And then the company can submit um, eligible costs for its research and development activity of up to 2 million euros per year uh, with its tax return. This will be assessed and then assuming all the eligible costs are accepted, the company then receives a tax credit on its subsequent tax return of half a million euros, so 25% of the eligible costs submitted. Uh, companies are also able to work together, so this is particularly advantageous, um, as Astrid also mentioned before, much of the emphasis throughout all of these programs is on small to medium enterprises, and this one is no different. Companies can work, work together. Maximum eligible cost level is 15 million euros per project, so as you can see, that um, incorporates seven or, or eight companies even working together and all um, submitting costs up to the maximal level. 
and even more um, happily for, for those companies able to perform the activity. The coronavirus has, has <clears throat> excuse me, the coronavirus stimulus package introduced in June by the German government. A part of it was that these two uh, limits have been doubled up to the end of 2021. So companies doing research development can now submit eligible costs of up to 4 million euros and they will get a 1 million euro tax credit on their subsequent tax bill, assuming all the eligible costs were accepted. So, as I said before, this is technology open. Um, there's very few um, exclusion criteria. So all companies um, looking to, to innovate can reap the benefits of, uh, of this program. Next slide, please. Probably Germany's um, best known um, long-term program is the High Tech Strategy 2025. Uh, as you can see, it has its seven key areas of research and development. It's not just medical technology, but uh, as you can also see, health is very, very prominent there. The strategy works on the basis of periodical calls for proposals, as Horizon Europe did, and it invites companies to, um, to answer the call for proposals with um, submissions of the, the projects. Uh, to answer what it is that the, the program, the question, sorry, that the program wishes to have answered. Grant levels are available for up to 50% of eligible costs for, for projects. Um, companies may work together and that 50% can be more um, in some cases, uh, certainly with um, if you're working together with uh, research and educational institutions. Um, and it's, uh, as I say, very technology open and uh, covers a, a wide range of, of health aspects under its umbrella. Next slide, please. Um, we we've talked so far about projects with the exception of the Tax Research Credit Act, um, but most of the programs operate on the basis of calls for proposals. The one significant exception to this is the Central Innovation Program for the Mittelstand. Um, this is technology open. There are no calls for proposals. Companies uh, willing to carry out a research and development activity will simply submit their project to the program for, for analysis and acceptance. Um, and it can receive a, a cash grant for enterprises of between 25 and 60% of the eligible costs, dependent on company size, the cooperation degree with, um, with the program and with research and, and uh, education institutions, and of course, the location. Um, the smaller the company, generally the higher the grant rate there will be. As I said, it's a completely technology open and another very important exception of this program to, to other research and development programs around is that this uh, defines a medium enterprise as having a maximum of 1,000 employees rather than just 250, according to the EU definitions that Astrid mentioned earlier. The program is running up to the end of 2024. Um, and there's no reason to, not to suspect that it will be uh, extended beyond that as it's proved to be extremely be beneficial to Germany thus far. Next slide, please. Um, moving on to, um, to programs that are probably a little bit more specific to, to Medica, to, the, um, to, to, this, uh, to this trade show. We have, there is a program called the KMU. KMU means small to medium enterprise in German, Klein Mittel Unternehmen, KMU Innovativ. Um, this also, like the high tech strategy, covers a, a broad spectrum of technologies, but medical technology is, is, um, is very prominent within them. As with all of the other programs, or many of the other programs, it is certainly targeted at small to medium enterprises, this time according to the EU definition that Astrid mentioned earlier. Again, as with other programs, it operates on the basis of calls for, for proposals, which are issued uh, generally twice a year. Collaborations are possible um, and particularly encouraged is uh, collaborations between corporate entities and research and educational institutions. And funding is available in, in the form of grants for up to 50% of the eligible costs of a project. For small companies, this occasionally can be more. And for pure research and education institutions, this can certainly be more. How it works, there is a, a two month project approval process where the Kamu Innovative will, will help you with the project submission um, and the project development support through the, the three year term afterwards is also possible. So Kamu Innovative not only gives you the grants, it will help you build your projects and, and accompany you as the project goes moves through its process. Next slide, please. And then finally, we come to a program called Industry in Clinique. 
Um, this works along similar lines to the Kaimu Innovative, but this has a very specific um, focus, which is to strengthen the synergy between medical research and hospitals, which aims to have the research and development activities carried out in a clear, the clinical environment so that the, uh, the results and the findings of the research and development projects are firstly easier to put into clinical trials, and secondly, assuming they're successful, then easier to put straight away into practical operation. Similar to Kaimu Innovative, it works on a two-phase model. Firstly, there is a concept creation, which takes around six months, for which funding support is available to a maximum of 50,000 euros. And then in the second stage, assuming the, the concept is, is approved and certified, it goes through a three-year uh, three phase of funding, sorry, um, a three-year pro uh, project implementation phase is, is funded. Um, again, as with the other program, 50, up to 50% of eligible costs can be, um, can be funded in the form of a grant. And again, education and research establishments or partnerships with education and research establishments can get a slightly higher funding intensity. Pure education and research establishment projects can actually get up to 100% of their eligible costs funded. And as I said, joint applications are possible, so corporate entities and educational research establishments are welcome to um, to apply for projects together. Next slide, please. Um, that program I mentioned just now, and most of the others, as I said, they operate on the basis of calls for proposals. So what you see on your screen here, I understand that's quite a lot of information. Um, it's just an example of two of the um, calls for proposals currently um, available. The one on the left of the screen, as you look at it, the prevention and care of epidemic infections, obviously with a very um, current affair um, in, in mind, is one of the ones um, issued by the Industry and Clinique program, awarded as a cash grant, as we talked about already. Um, here you can see the funding is for industry-led and particularly for high-risk and pre-competitive solutions for all the stages of, um, of epidemic infectious disease uh, treatment. Um, as I mentioned before, collaborative projects are, are welcomed, particularly from small to medium enterprises. And it's important to note that these can include clinical fe feasibility studies. So clinical feasibility trials can be funded as well. The project runtime is to a maximum of 36 months, as we said, a three, a three year uh, runtime for the project. And very important um, for this project, but also for, for all of the other programs, and also, as I mentioned, with Horizon Europe, is that the results must be made public within Germany and the EU. So if a, a government funds your research and development projects, the results of that project must be disseminated publicly within that country. This is actually a part of the EU funding law. On the right hand side of your screen, you see a slightly more general call for proposal for production research as a part of the Kaimu Innovative program. Again, targeting SMEs and again, targeting higher risk research and pre-competitive development this time in production research for aspects of medical technology, such as machines. Cash grants of up to 50% can be more, um, depending on who you partner with and the size of the company. This time, only a two year runtime for the project to be funded. And as I mentioned before, the two stage application and process. So there's the two month approval process followed by the runtime of two years. These calls for proposals are generally issued in April and October, and then the project submissions are evaluated twice yearly thereafter. And as I mentioned with the other one, the results of the research and development projects must be published, disseminated and implemented within Germany and the EU. Uh, once the project is finished and assuming, we hope that it, that it uh, is a project that moves to fruition and is a success. Next slide, please. And that is a, a very brief overview of the research and development um, programs available. You see on the screen our contact details. We'd welcome um, any questions you have, any inquiries you have, or any, uh, any potential research and development um, projects you may have, or any projects you may need funding. Um, and I will hand you back to, to Gabriel for some closing words. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you, Daniel. <clears throat> uh, a remark to all the participants. You're welcome to continue asking questions via the Q&A tool. Uh, in the upper bar on the upper side of the screen, uh, in my view anyway. Uh, we did collect a number of questions already and maybe I'll just start out and uh, read some aloud so uh, we can have our specialists here comment on them. 
Uh, one is uh, a manufacturer is collaborating here with the Fraunhofer Institute uh, on a prototype development project. And the question is, is there funding available for this uh, partnership? Uh, maybe I might add, um, so I guess this refers to Daniel's um, topic, innovation. Uh, maybe let me just add uh, some background info on the Fraunhofer group um, of institutes. It is a nonprofit group of research and development institutes, which has been in place in Germany for um, a century now. Uh, there's over 100 research facilities ac across the country uh, with various uh, technology uh, focuses uh, from automobile down to pharmaceutical and of course, medical technology, medical robotics, for example. So this was just a, some background info. Daniel, would you comment on funding of partnering relations with uh, such an institute? Um, it's certainly possible. Um, I, I can't say much to the specific project without knowing all the details, but yes, I mean, partnering up with the Fraunhofer Institute, there's um, certainly funding possible on a, on a project. Um, Having the Fraunhofer Institute, as Gabriel said, is actually normally a, a very, um, very good uh, partner to have because of the, the sheer breadth of, and depth of expertise that the Fraunhofer Institute has available to it. Right, thank you. Um, let's follow up. May I know what is meant by technology open and no proposal required? Uh, let me finish this question. And is the grant available for applicants from all countries around the globe or just from Germany and Europe? Um, for Tim, you have to have a, an entity here. So you, your business has to be set up here in, in some form. Um, technology open means um, it is a lot more, the, the spectrum is a lot more wide. If you look at the high tech strategy 2025 and the um, the was the other guy more innovative. Um, you saw they specified ten particular fields. Technology open in the same way as the research and development. The um, the tax credit act means that any aspect of technology, so innovation, um, advancement in knowledge, which can have a positive effect on the overall society, is potentially fundable. Um, no proposal required. That's not quite true. Obviously, you have to submit a, a project proposal to the. Um, to the SIM program, but the other programs actually ask specific questions of research which they wish to have answered, whereas SIM will accept submissions from, from companies, um, from all comers, and then we'll decide whether to award the grants or not. Okay, thank you. Now here's a question. Uh, we have a sales representation in Hamburg and are preparing for a manufacturing site, which would be close to our sales operations. Uh, from an incentive standpoint, where are, where would be the best location? Question mark. I think this is for Astrid. Uh, it's about production. When I remember you're showing the um, map of Germany with the production um, incentive ratios, which would be your um, answer to this question? Yes, if you could maybe go back to the slide where the map is shown. Is All right. Possible? Yeah, sure. You would basically have to look up the, the locations that are um, available to you in, in a database where you would uh, be able to look up which um, percentage um, applies to you. And uh, if you look at the northern area here where Hamburg is situated, you can see that there are a couple of blue areas around it. And um, you would have to, as I said, um, have, a, have a closer look at the um, different places um, in order to find out uh, where you can get the most uh, percentage. Okay, thanks. I can see that in a diameter of maybe 200 miles uh 200 kilometers uh, there are various options uh, to do this uh one last question we have uh, 30 seconds left is there a restriction on the nationality of funding applicants do you have to have a german or european no. passport no excellent that's a, <laughs> a super <laughs> direct question to finish this session actually uh, you're welcome to follow up with us please um send us emails uh, or give us a call 
through our website. Um, we would be available and at your service. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, guys. Goodbye.